Hey everyone, NFI Hammer here. In this video, you will see two beginners in the tabletop hobby go head to head in a game of 1000 point Warhammer 10th edition. We're using the latest April 2024 uh, balance data slate. Uh, and it's the My Necron Canoptic Court versus Andy's Evil Aldari. Uh, this is the first time I'm using Canoptic Court, so I'm pretty excited to try it out and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, if you just want to learn by watching two beginners play, or you just want to see two beginners having fun in the hobby, stick around. This video is for you. The Necron Canoptic Court uh, unit overview. So we have 10 Necron Warriors and a Chronomancer. The Chronomancer has the Auto Divinator Enhancement, which I misunderstood when I added it. So it gives you a CP every time they get a bonus CP, which won't actually come into play today. So that was a mistake. Um, but moving on to the Plasmancers, They've got a, um, they're the leader of the five immortals, uh, so that means they crit on a five plus, which is pretty awesome on those immortals. But we're playing with the April 2024 balance update, so they have all been um, increased in points, both the Plasmancer and the immortals. This is a new unit that I finished painting. It's a Locust Heavy Destroyer. I painted it in the Sharakan Dynasty theme to make it blend with the others. Um, he's only 50 points and does a little bit of damage. Um, I think they're probably better with bigger numbers, but we'll see how he goes today. We've also got my three Tomb Blades that zip around on the battlefield. They've got stealth. They've got scouts, um, they're pretty cool. They can shoot and move. And then I'm very excited to finally get these Canoptic Wraiths. So I finally painted three of these. Um, so I can now field a unit. These guys have a 10 inch move. When they move over enemy units, they damage them. Um, and you can also pair it up with a Technomancer which gives them some extra utility, which is pretty exciting, but he also got a pretty heavy point nerf. Then I've also got this new reanimator. I put a pipe and stuff on the base, so it's just playing around and experimenting. Um, reanimators are pretty useless. I've only got a three inch aura now. Then I've got my two spiders that, you know, very rarely get to shoot anything because of their short 18 inch range, they usually die. But when they do shoot stuff, it's pretty cool. And then my trusty Doomstalker to, you know, unleash damage from afar. And that's all the units. For the Eldari force today, we're gonna to be led by a horribly painted Farsia, one of my models I painted a decade ago and hoping to repaint at some point soon. Uh, we're going to have a five-man squad of fire dragons. Um, they're going to um, hopefully be taking out heavy vehicles and tanks. We've got some uh, dark reapers. Um, hoping this game to try out maybe some shenanigans with either phantasm or fire and fade to keep them alive. Historically, they've died quite quickly. We've got a five-man squad of the Sweeping Orcs, recently increased by points a little bit. And fortunately, one of the fellas uh, didn't make the journey over here today so well. So I'm gonna have to re-glue re him. We've got a Falcon uh, Grav Tank, um, equipped with uh, Bright Lance and um, his Pulse Laser and Shuriken Cannon. Um, he'll actually be transporting the Fire Dragons. Um, we've got some um, Wind Riders. Um, these guys uh, 
really strong against um, shooting infantry on objectives. We've got a Viper equipped with another Bright Lance. Um, you'll see that theme throughout my army. We've got a uh, Wraith Lord with two Bright Lances, so a shitload of Bright Lances. Um, kind of, I guess, scared of a lot of the tanks and heavier units Necrons can field. And lastly, a started painted, but not quite done, um, five-man squad of Wraith Guard. Um, I equipped the models using the D-Scythe weapon, just because it looks cooler, but they're actually using the uh, Wraith Cannon, because it's a better um, weapon, uh, in my opinion. That's Eldari. For the deployment, we selected Hammer and Anvil at random. And this is an interesting deployment because it will force all of our troops to kind of very narrow uh, no man's land. And this coupled with the primary mission we drew, the ritual, uh, actually forces us to use no man's land as the only way to get victory points from the primary mission. And it's actually really quite cool. You can spawn new uh, objective markers every turn so that'll be really interesting with the canoptic court mechanism of power matrix and finally for the scrambler missions um, this will prevent any sort of one just teleporting straight onto an objective marker and so those objective markers are like spinning up all over the map um, they're kind of creating these pockets of scrambler fields so an interesting combination we've got going here Necron Canoptic Court versus Aldari Strands of Fate Incursion Battle 1000 points Beginner Battle starts now End of Eldari deployment. Uh, so Eldari uh, were the defenders. Um, so I got this end of the board and started deployment first and also ended up um, deploying our stuff out first. Uh, we have some the Dark Reapers tucked away behind the train so they can jump out and uh, run through the train um, to shoot and also have the potential of Fire and Fade or Phantasm if they want with the trees in the train. We've got the Viper hiding away with his mobility. I wasn't concerned about deploying him as much. Um, so he can hopefully move and get a line of sight on someone. We've got the Farseer squirreled away at the back um, near the Wraith Lord. Um, again, Wraith Lord hiding behind line of sight where possible um, to move out when he wants to shoot. We've got some Wind Riders hiding behind some what's calling a hill here. Um, beside them, the Swooping Hawks, their deployment's not as um, important just because they can jump to the skies, to sky leap and redeploy. The uh, Wraith Guard tried to hide them behind um, what we're calling a hill as well. However, there is potentially line of sight on them from some of the Necron units. And we finally have um, in Strategic Reserve the Falcon, um, which is also carrying as transport, the Fire Dragons. We're on deployment on the attacking side. So I've got three of these Tomb Blades, but they have a Scout 9 ability, so I'll probably move them up. Actually, I should have done that. Um, and then I basically just got a blob of everything just sitting all here. There's not really much strategy to it. I do have the reanimator in the middle with this three inch aura um, and the spider that's within six inches of some of the vehicles um, for its aura and that's kind of it. There's not really much um, strategy. It's kind of just trying to push into the no man land um, because that's where the primary objectives can be scored. 
Over on turn one, I drew the bring it down uh, secondary mission, which gives VP for destroying monsters or vehicles. How that the Eldari force has got them tucked way at the very back or, you know, in reserves. And then the secondary mission, attempting target, um, select an objective marker in no man's land. Well, because of the uh, ritual, there is only one at the start. So I just um, selected that and I had all my troops poised, ready to go for it. So I've scored that, which gives me a five VP. Um, other than that, uh, when I moved these units all up, um, Aldari player Phantasm to just tuck these ones behind cover, got an unlucky one roll, so couldn't move them very far, but it was enough to avoid um, shooting by the Locust Heavy and the um, Doomstalker, so that only left the Doomstalker able to charge the Swooping Hawks. Yeah, I remembered. Um, so I managed to kill two uh, with some incredible saves, uh, lots of sixes and fives and stuff. Um, otherwise that unit might have been wiped off turn one. But other, oh, and so with the ritual, the um, Canoptic Reanimator has summoned another objective marker here. And that's the end of turn one. End of Eldari turn one. So we drew uh, for secondary objectives, we got Investigate Signals, which is all about getting in the corners of the board and Capture Enemy Outpost, uh, which is about um, getting into the enemy's deployment um, zone objective. Um, I decided the enemy outpost um, was just going to be unachievable because I'm miles away from the enemy's deployment zone and the mission rule doesn't allow for um, and my Swooping Hawks to go Skyleap straight into an objective marker. So um, I just foregoed that one for this round. Um, yeah, and just tried for the Investigate Signals. So to achieve that, uh, for, I moved the Viper to the corner here. I moved my Wind Riders to the corner over there and uh, Skyleap my um, Swooping Hawks to the corner over there. Um, and so it's which gave me the six um, secondary uh, points. Um, in terms of the rest of my army, I moved out my Wraith Guard, Wraith Lord, Farseer, and Dark Reapers here um, to take a shot at um, the Warriors. And of the ten of them, I killed five. And that's it for, so no primary points, just the six secondary points. That's it for Eldari turn one. And two, I did the defend stronghold uh, missionary was the one that I picked up. Um, so I've moved my two Canoptic Spiders um, just to try and hold that objective, but that one is still six inches with the Doomstalker for its aura benefit. Um, I moved my Warriors up, but I obviously have reading comprehension issues because I attacked these Wraith Lords, um, even though they can attack back. So I ended up losing three units and doing zero damage. Um, my Doomstalker did manage to kill one and my Locust Heavy Destroyer did one wound. Three wounds. Oh, three, three wounds. Points. So, it's a little bit wounded. Um, and my Tomb Blades were over here and they shot at the, what's it called, Farseer? Yeah. And he almost died and they had to use the command point reroll to save it so it's on one wound. Um, and then they have the ability to move six inches, so they just kind of pull back a little bit. And that's pretty much the end of the turn. End of Eldari turn two. Uh, for secondary objectives, um, we kept from the first round the capture enemy 
uh, outpost and drew area denial. Um, the area denial need to be wholly within the center of the board, which I knew was going to be difficult for me. So I focused on capturing enemy outpost to try and take the um, objective in the enemy zone. Um, so what I did um, to try and score that, I brought my Falcon down from Deep Strike, um, nine inches away from the objective marker as per the game rules and um, deployed the fire dragons, um, disembarked the fire dragons so that they could, um, who took an overwatch from the Doomstalker, losing two of five of the units. Um, and I tried shooting the Falcon against the Doomstalker, which but the canoptic strategy to um, uh, was played so that he couldn't. Uh, I couldn't shoot the Doomstalker unless I'm within 12. Um, so the Falcon didn't end up shooting anything. Big whiff. Um, but the Fire Dragons then shot at the spiders that were on the objective. Um, they killed one of them, and the Wraith Lord um, shot two Bright Lancers, and one of those two went through to kill the second one. Um, also brought the uh, Silken Hawks from the corner of the battlefield into the zone so that I can actually capture the enemy outpost. Uh, for the rest of the board, the Sweeping Hawks shot at um, the floaty Mick Floatson <laughs> and took one wound off him. Uh, the... what else? The Farseer's hiding um, down here within nine of the center objective marker, so could not shoot, uh, choose not to shoot and deploy a objective marker beside him. The, uh, the what was it? The wind riders um, went to ham on the warriors that were in the middle, killing all bar the four out of five of them, followed up with the dark reapers, um, who came out of hiding again to finish off the last of the warriors, including the leader. Um, and the, then the, uh, was it the Wraith Guard shot at the reanimator that was here, um, taking off half the wounds there, or two of six wounds there. And the Viper shot its bright lights into the same reanimator, um, conductive reanimator, um, taking off the final four wounds. Um, so all in all, um, uh, quite a lot of good rolls. Um, favored Eldari and a strong round for Eldari. That's the end of turn two for Eldari. Necron turn three, I used a command point to get rid of the home objective one because there's no way I can kind of hold that now. Um, so I got the overwhelming force, which means if I can kill a unit that is um, on an objective, I get a three VP. So my locust heavy destroyer, my new guy, he actually did quite well and just obliterated the, um, what they called swooping hawks. Um, that were defending this to get the three VPs for the secondary. Um, I had a big blob here, so I got 10 VP on the primary. Um, so I moved up my Tomb Blades and Canoptic Wraiths, and I was shooting at the Dark Reapers yep. that were cursed. Um, and it did take a lot. I think I had to shoot everything I had at them to kill them. Um, and then my Doomstalker here shot at the Viper here. Um, he was within killing range, but then the Fate Dice meant that there was no chance to kill it. And then just wanted to try the Wraiths out. I um, charged into the Wraith Lord. Yes. And... Um, did zero damage, um, but then also received zero damage, so it's a bit of a stalemate. 
with that. I do have the whip coils melee weapon profile, which is not, um, which is meant for more infantry with no um, armor penetration. So um, and very low strength. So it wasn't the right one to do that. Um, but that's it for the end of turn three. End of Eldari, turn three. Um, started off, uh, so I drew, I kept the area denial um, secondary mission from last turn, um, which needs me to be in the middle of the board within six inches with one unit and no enemies. Um, and I've got the defend stronghold where I need to be in my objective marker in my deployment zone at the end of the opponent's turn. Um, so I fell back um, with my Wraith Lord who was in combat with the whippy necrony guys um, and then uh, um, moved him back so I could sit in the objective market to hold that for hopefully end of next turn he's still there we had the um, there were tomb blades here which the wind riders moved across from one hill to the other um, hoping to shoot at some necron warriors but turns out they were out of range so instead deciding to shoot at the Tomb Blades to them and combined with the Farsia using its psychic um, Eldritch Storm was able to kill the um, Tomb Blades. The um, Viper and Wraith Lord um, were able to um, kill um, one of the uh, uh, Whippy Necron units and the Wraith Guard moved up to the center of the board for the um, secondary objective that requires in there and took out some of the Necron Warriors which combined with the uh, Falcon. Uh, Falcon took out the remaining Necron Warriors to stop Necron from scoring 10 points for these two um, side-by-side primary objectives and the uh, I think it was the, the, who was it? I think the Wraith Guard um, took some Overwatch when they advanced, there were four of them. They became two, so the Doomstalker shot at them um, in retaliation. So the Doomstalker killed two of the Wraith Guard, but the Wraith Guard were able to take off three wounds off the Doomstalker. And so that meant at the end of the turn, um, Eldari has scored um, on the one primary objective that's beside, been deployed beside the Basia there, and the area denial has been scored, and as long as I hold my primary objective, I'll also score defending Stronghold. That's the end of Eldari, turn three. End of Necron, turn four, I got the cleanse objection, uh, objective, uh, which is kind of a good one. Um, if you cleanse two markers that are not um, in your deployment zone, uh, you can then get 5 VP. So I moved the Locust Heavy Destroyer here um, to get that one. I moved the Canoptic Wraiths um, in to this position. In hindsight, I should have just left them sitting between these two to get 10 VP um, from the primary objectives, but I just wanted to give them a spin. Um, so that was a tie with two OC on it. And so my Doomstalker then shot across and managed to kill one but got something like three wounds or four wounds or something crazy in retaliation from it um so i think it took more damage than it did but it did move it down to one model which means that i have the objective control so i didn't shoot or anything with these guys so that's how i did my second cleanse to get five vp so that's it for turn four End of Eldari turn four, and uh, we drew two new objective markers, those being secured um, no man's land and engage in all fronts. So we, for engage in all fronts to control all four, heavy units in all four quarters, we put the Viper, came wide, wasn't the home objective and went wide. We left the 
Uh, Windrunner's there. We had the Falcon move up from the enemy's objective marker in their deployment zone um, into this quarter alone and had the fire dragons hide here in this quarter to get all four quarters. For the for the um, uh, the other objective, we had secure no man's land, which required two objective markers for which the Falcon came up to sit on a second objective marker and the Farsi is hiding here to already hold the first one. And that's uh, meant both secondaries got scored as well as starting off with one primary, uh, two primary points, because the, no, one primary point because the Wraith Guard was engaged with these guys and behind on OC. And I also charged up the Wraith Knight, uh, Wraith Lord, in fact shooting everything I had at these Necron Wraith guys and managing to kill, have revived and kill again um, the Wraith um, Scorpion thing. That's the end of Eldari turn 4. We're on turn 5. This was more just played out in our mind about how it would have unfurled. So I did get the capture enemy outpost which gives 8 VP, um, but because I'm in engagement um, range, uh, melee combat I can't actually like fall back and advance enough to get to the enemy objective. I don't have anything in reserves or anything that I can deep strike in. Um, not that I would be able to anyway with the Scrambler Fields uh, mission rule. Um, so that just leaves me with the bring it down. So I could in theory get um, two VP plus an extra one for the 10 model damage plus an extra one for tactical. So that would have been like five or something if I do kill this. Um, but that just isn't enough to catch the eight point lead that the Aldari is ahead. Um, plus they're almost guaranteed to have five VP and the next one from the guy that's hiding in here, the Farseer, he is pretty much on one hit point the entire game, um, but he's just been sitting there protected getting VP every turn. So yeah, I really think if I just set the wraiths on the middle of these two objectives here, would have potentially gotten me another 10 um, and just, yeah, been able to hold them because they're pretty unkillable. And that maybe would have been the difference. Maybe not though. But yeah, all in all, it was a pretty good game. The one turn where there was 27 wounds dealt um, and basically killed three units uh, was pretty much the game over from that point. And yeah, it was a good game. I enjoyed the Canoptic Court, um, the Power Matrix style thing. Uh, Reroll is so powerful because you can get um, crits off it as well as just like obviously being able to hit. Um, so yeah, it was good fun. Had a chance. Wow, camera's gone. <laughs> what is the error message? <laughs> oh, uh, back online. Okay, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, I tilt. So yeah, just do like that. Yeah, that's better. All right. Yeah, so I'll edit that out. Okay. Um, 